old school, new school, what you gonna do today? Say what? And then it happened. It took me by surprise, I knew that you felt it too. Forever till the end of time. But love is till the end of time. Time. I love you till the end of time. Time. I love you till the end of time. I'm not sure I love film till the end of time, but this week I've been out shooting. I was shooting film. Can you believe that? I was out shooting some film this week. You know, about a year ago, I showed you all this, my Zenit EM, 1980s, no frills, SLR, film camera. This was my first um, SLR that I got back in the 80s. And it shoots film. You clap the film in there, wind it on, set the ASA ISO, do the um, light meter reading, and you look through the viewfinder, manual focus, no TV mode or A, um, AV mode on this, no aperture priority or shutter priority. Look through the viewfinder, you do your focus, set your aperture, which is, look at that, gorgeous. It's all stops. You know, we used to, use, we used to know these without looking. I could just tell you 2.8458, you know, a couple of clicks. Look through the viewfinder, take your pit, wind it on. Look through the viewfinder, set your aperture, take your pit, wind it on. And um, yeah, this week I went on a little um, photography, photography workshop with the Rapport Film Festival down there in Boogie Down, Brixton. Yeah, I was invited to go on, shoot some film, you know? So big up to Eddie, who took the workshop. Big up to Lara, uh, who invited me onto the workshop. Big up to Effie, who helped to um, process some of these in the dark room. You know, when you go in the dark room and it's, you have that red light and all the chemicals and yeah. <laughs> Effie was there showing me, taking me through and reminded me what it was like in the olden days. And it was great, you know? They put an old school Canon, I think it was an EOS one or something, old school film camera in my hand. Go and shoot some street photography. That's what they told me. So I, you know, me somewhat weary of doing this because I haven't done it for a long time. Long time, 20 plus years, I haven't shot no film. And I've gotten used to my beloved M50 here which is what I shoot street photography with now. You know, excellent, beautiful EVF, silent shutter, all these things, digital screen on the back where you can just, all the benefits, I've gotten so used to it. I thought, let me take the photography challenge. The photography challenge to go and shoot some street photography with a film camera. And this is the result. Now, if you look at this, um, these negs, yeah, it's a long time since I looked at any negs in one of these. You can see some, <laughs> I've got some missed shots here, misfires, which is why these, um, these negs are blank. Uh, this is a color neg, which I had, it was on my desk, so I put it in there. But I was shooting black and white, not this one, this is some old school, proper old school from back in the day, 20 years ago. I'd... And this is the results of my street photography in Brixton. I went around, you know, with my, Canon EOS, EOS 1, I believe it was. I had quite a big lens on, I think it was a 55 to 200. So that limited the kind of shots that I could get because with my M, M50, I've been shooting with this, this um, lovely 1018, which in full frame works out, well, where I normally have it, it's, it's about 16, 16 millimeters. So full frame equivalent 16 millimeters. That's, the um, focal length that I'm getting used to and I like shooting at the moment. So anyway, I had this, this great stonking great 55 to 200 on. So I had to 
work out the best way to make use of this, this lens. And it was interesting because even when I did take my first shot, I saw a nice frame. I saw uh, a, a brother standing by a tree and there was a man walking past with a walking stick and I quickly, clack, I didn't even have time. Luckily it had autofocus on it. It weren't like the Zenit, which was completely manual focus. Otherwise I would have been screwed. Um, it, had, it did have autofocus, so that was a blessing. So I picked up the camera quickly, clack, and I clacked it. And the moment I clacked it, I looked on the back to see the image. And of course, there was no image. And that kind of like put me off balance a bit. But it was very interesting. It was very interesting. Um, I took to the challenge. I walked the streets looking for shots, framed them up really quickly, clack, take the picture without too much thinking about it. It was almost like what this, this lomography, lomography, is it lomography? Lomography thing is, where you don't think too much. You're encouraged to not think too much. It's that old school kind of look to your images where you have these old vintage cameras. Can we call this vintage? Vintage? These old cameras and you take the pictures and because the quality isn't as brilliant and beautiful and not perfect, but more perfect than before, than these, because the image is, is not as perfect as this, the, what do you call it? The, um, not impurities, but the deficiencies of the camera, the deficiencies of the image become part of the image. You know, like in video, where you have these, you put a filter on and you get this old grainy look and you got the lines and the crackles. That is basically what lomography is. Because the lines and the crackles will become part of the image. So anyway, this is, this is, this is what I'm learning. And this is what I've come away from that project with. The images are not as brilliant, not as sharp and defined and perfect as the modern digital mirrorless M50. But there is a quality to that imperfection that makes it come together. It's almost like with those lovers of vinyl. When you put the needle on, you hear that crackle. It becomes part of it. It becomes part of what makes that a warm human experience. So I'm learning, you know, you're never too learn, never too old to learn or relearn what you once knew and forgot. So anyway, it's walking around, looking for shots, clacking them, taking them, clapping them off as I got. And normally when I do street photography with my M50, I can, you know, I can work a, a scene. If I get a scene and I see something, I'll be, I can take one, I can take two, I can take three, I can take four and quickly work the scene to get the best one. What I was finding I was doing with the film camera is just taking one and moving on. Cause I only had, how many did I have? I think I had 32, I had 32 shots, which surprisingly goes really quickly, 32. Even when you're just clacking one, you're clacking and moving on. So because I knew the area, it was in Brixton is my area. So I knew certain, I knew certain shots would work. I knew I've got my spots where I go to take my shots. So what I found myself doing is going to shots that I've done previously with digital and seeing if I could recreate them. Not all of them could work because I had such a long lens, but it was fun. It was fun, you know? And um, at the end of it, I came away with these, which I'd quite forgotten about the process of negs, negatives, and the chemicals that you, and the process of putting your hands in the little black bag to rummage around and break the capsule open and put it, it's all long basically, it's really long. You've got to really love shooting film to go through that process to come out with these. And then when you come out with these, then you have to go into the dark room, which is a whole nother process. And I haven't done darkroom since school days. You know, even the days when I was shooting film, I was sending them off. So that part of it was in the back of my mind, dark room 101 or whatever it is. So anyway, going in the dark room with Effie 
and some of the others and seeing the magic appear, you know, and all the little witchcraft <laughs> processes. Those who work in the dark room know what I'm talking about. All the little witchcraft processes that you do to shade the image from the light to make certain parts come out stronger and certain parts render. It is just amazing. It's just amazing. So props to all you old school film photographers who do processing in the dark room. You know, you can stay in there for hours. Time just flies when you're in there. It's just so creative and interesting. And it's a whole different world. Photography nowadays, digital photography is a whole different world. And I left that, that workshop. You know, they, they actually printed the images and we had a little little um, display on the wall. And it was good to see all the different images from all the people on the workshop who, you know, saw Brixton from a whole different um, direction and angle and we compared and it was it was really great. So I really enjoyed going on that. So once again, big up to Lara for inviting me on. She saw me on the streets with me M50 doing some digital and she said, hey you, come on this little course that we got, this little workshop we're having round the back. You know, you might find it interesting. I didn't really want to do it, but you know, it was a challenge and I'm glad that I went. So if some of you who are, you know, really entrenched in digital now, and, and I get it because I'm one of you, you're really entrenched in this digital street photography, do go and try, do go and try the old school, do the old school thing, you know. It, if you can find a course or a little workshop or something like that, that can really help you. Because now, that's made me go and reach for my Zenit now. I've gone and I've reached for my Zenit EM and I've got a roll of film in the cupboard and, and, and guess what? I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna load it up, and I reload, Zenit Reloaded. That's what it is, 2018 Zenit Reloaded. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna shoot some street photography and hopefully I'll get some product to show you in due course. Stay tuned. Old school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.